Hey Dane, what are you doing? It's time for the Saturday video. When? Today? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Oh, I'm so tired, Dana. Come on, the kittens want it. Okay, hold on. Let's go, go get my butt on camera, Dana. <laughs> okay, my sweet kittens. This, I am so excited about this. This is my new technique called glottery. I know, it is so cheesy, and Dana has been laughing all week every time that I say it because it's not glass, it's not pottery, it's glottery. That is like a perfect infomercial voice right there. But here's why. It's glass that I've kind of made, this is sand glass in the back, but it's glass that I've made with this pottery look and pottery feel. So I'm gonna be quiet for two seconds and just kind of, I hope the camera picks this up. It feels like pottery, it's a little rougher, it's toned down, it looks very organic, it looks like, kind of like, well, pottery, you know, stone and things like that. So I love it. This is using um, the UGC product, white mud. And then we're also going to use glass line paints. And we're also, if you can get it, if Dana can see it, if the glare, there's also just a touch of the glass glow product that is leaving that gold sheen on it. So I'll show you how to, guys how to use that. This is a whole new line for you guys. Can you get the detail there, Dana? Mm -hmm. Texture paint. It's a, it's a real process though, so um, it's not just slapping glass on, or I'm sorry, paint on the glass. So it is a process, but I'm thinking about some of my students that I know that sell for a living and they're really trying to get out there and make a living. Craig S, Pam H, uh, Melinda, there's so many of you guys, but you guys come to mind because uh, Stacy, you guys just make little six by sixes of these. We're gonna use stencils and just make little dishes. I mean, out of this, this is a whole nother thing. I'm actually going to um, use this stencil in the video, but you don't have to use a stencil. So if the stencil's not in stock, which it'll be out of stock within 15 minutes, it always is, no matter how many we stop, we have 50 other designs that I just can't wait to get my hands on. So you could do a six by six. For those of you with small kilns, you could do a 12 by 12. For those of you with larger kilns, it doesn't have to be a bowl. It can be a square, it can be a plate. I'm gonna reach over here real quick and grab this. This is a, a skull plate that I did and it really looks like pottery and so it can be whatever you want, whatever shape you want. It's up to you. You are the artist. So we're going to do that. I'm really, 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 really pumped to show this to you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, some spray adhesive and a stencil. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And we're going to get rocking and rolling. Okay, so this is the stencil that I have chosen to use. And the first thing I do is put a Sharpie marker uh, on one of the sides. That's actually going to be my mud side application, my mud side, okay? I'll explain about the mud as soon as we get to it. So that is not the side you're going to be spraying. So it depends how your brain works and how you wanna do it. You can either mark the side that's gonna be sprayed or you can mark the side that you're going to mud. So um, all I'm gonna do is I made a little slip knot right here with a piece of string because this stencil doesn't really have a handle, but any of the other stencils you can just hold by the edges. And what I wanna do is use Elmer's multi-purpose spray adhesive. You can also you can use any spray adhesive. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to give you a schedule to burn that out pretty early on in the process. So, okay. So first thing I'm going to do is spray the non-marked side. I don't need a lot. I just need enough for this to stick. So don't do lots of coats. Whoops, sorry about that, Dana. It's just enough to stick. Then what I'm going to do is apply it to my glass. I'm ready to apply my stencil, so I have my mud side up, and I apply it to my glass. Now I know I'm going to get lots of emails that say, what glass is that? It's so beautiful. This is some special production by Bullseye. Um, it's very, very old. I just found it the other day, and the red fires out, so don't be too impressed. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I just decided to use it because it kind of has that terracotta-ish look. I don't know. You can use black, white, red, cream, whatever you want. It's your, your choice, guys, okay? It's any three millimeter meter bullseye glass. Now, I've taken my towel, I have a towel, and I've just kind of pressed the stencil down, okay? So now it is thoroughly stuck. Then I just kind of press like this, 
Okay, and now I'm ready to apply my mud. I usually wait just like a minute or two to let that glue set. It's not set in stone, but just a, just a minute or two is fine. So I'm going to use this white mud. For those of you who just saw my other tree panel video, I used the black mud. Um, it's the same idea, but if you haven't seen the video, this stuff is very inexpensive and it dries like cement, but you can also fire it. The lower the temperature you fire it, the more chalky it is. The higher temperature you fire it, the more glossy it is. We are gonna to go to a full fuse for this terracotta plate, um, but we're gonna do something a little different to try to get that um, pottery texture. Because why? It's glottery. Okay, so now just go ahead and move, remove your string that you made the slip knot for. We don't need that any longer. Make sure that's there. Okay, so we're just going to recreate this bowl right here. Um, and this is kind of the warmer side of the color palette. And then I use the blues and greens for this one. So I can see this being like a whole line for you guys and call it glottery, do it, just go ahead. Just call it glottery. You guys can start a, a, a movement and then everybody be like, oh my gosh, do you have those glottery balls? And then I'll be like, well, gosh, I gave that one away, didn't I? Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so now I have a pastry palette knife and I have my mud. Always leave your cap on your mud, always tighten it back up. This stuff will dry. This stuff is good for one year. There's an expiration date on it and you'll go through it fairly quickly um, if you're making lots of bowls. But this will get us, you know, quite a few bowls out of that. Well, other thing, if Dana, you can get this over here, we have this bucket of soapy water. When we're done with our stencil, we drop it in the soapy water right away. When we're done with our tools that have mud, mud on them, we drop it in the soap soapy water right away. Anything that you use, tool, stencil, anything with mud, goes in there until you have time to clean it. Because if the mud hardens, the longer it hardens, it will be cemented and it is very difficult to get off. If you get it on your table, use a razor blade to scrape it off. Uh, I do not think it comes out of clothes. I haven't uh, gotten that messy yet, but I'm sure it doesn't. And it is lead free and non-toxic, so that's good. Um, and then always have a placemat down so you don't get this stuff on the table. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna use white mud. I'm going to apply it with my pastry knife that I got at Michael's. You could use a regular palette knife too. It just takes a little longer. And kind of just put it, we do not want this thick, guys. What, let me tell you what this mud's doing right now. We're about to use glass line paints, okay? Glass line paints are full fusible paints that go from 1425 to 1500. The higher you fire glass line paints, the shinier and the more vibrant they become. I show in my classes how to do that. And uh, we're not gonna talk about that here because we actually don't want them shiny here, but they're really convenient. You just shake them up and you just go. You don't have to mix them with anything. Um, but this paint acts as a primer. I'm sorry, excuse me. This mud acts as a primer for the paints. So A, you can paint on it very easily because it's very hard to use the glass line paints on the glass, especially if you're using a brush. How many of us have tried this and it just doesn't stick to the glass? So this, this primer will allow you to do that. So what I'm going to do, and it also will make the colors pop. So basically think of the mud in this application, in this project, as a primer. Now I'm going to spread this around. Don't overwork the mud because you're going to work it underneath the stencil. You might say, why, oh why, did you use spray adhesive? Well, because otherwise the mud gets underneath the stencil. So that's why we use spray adhesive. But how can you use spray adhesive in the kiln? Well, it burns off at around 400 to 600, and I'm going to give you that schedule. Anything else? Okay, so I'm just answering questions um, that might be going through your head right now. Okay, nice thin layer. Doesn't need to be perfect. This is, this is uh, we're trying to make this look like, you know, stone and earthy material. So I, you don't need to be perfect. Just slap it on there. But I do want it to be thin. Take it, put it, take it, and put it back in the jar. Okay, we got to need a little bit more right here. Just dip your knife in. Okay, now that is pretty, pretty good. I'm going to take my tool immediately and I'm going to do what? Drop it into the bowl. I'm going to put the cap back on the mud immediately. What I want you guys to do next is just give the mud a minute uh, or two. I see that I just brushed it right there, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, no, it's bugging me. Gosh darn it. Is anybody else like that? I know Dana's like that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and put the in the tool. Now, I'm just going to tell you guys, you're going to want to find something for texture. You could use this. This is a texture mat. Do not ask me where I got this. I know it was $12, but I don't know where I got this. I, I collect things. That's what I do in my studio. And then I try to use them for glass and I go through my whole studio like every six months ago and then get some more ideas. But this is a texture mat. I'm sure it's for clay or something like that. 
Um, or you can do, let's see, a washcloth. Dana's done a washcloth, that's pretty cool. We're trying to, we're going to take this and put texture into the mud. I let the mud start to dry. It's immediately starting to dry. And I want it a little bit gummy. So maybe one to two minutes, just play with it. What else do we use, Dana? We use texture mats, we use, you're gonna ask me about the rubber stamp thing. The rubber shelf lining. The rubber shelf lining for shelves, that's a good one. Um, Cheesecloth would be a very, very good one. Something that can make a texture. Now, when you make your texture, obviously this is gonna go right into the mud cleaner bath. That's, that's all right. I don't want you to press down so hard that you're making a suction because all you're gonna do is get the veining technique, which everybody knows the veining technique. You go down like this, and then you press it really hard with the paints or any kind of liquid substance, and then you pull it up and it causes a veining technique. I don't want that. That's not what I want. Um, you're gonna get that though if you press too hard. So. Um, I'm just gonna kind of make a very light texture. This paper will work. This is uh, the paper that you, we get with our bullseye crates. That looks pretty good, Dane, what do you think? Yeah, I'm getting down so they can okay. see. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw my mat. That was a good one. I'm not trying to be perfect here. This is, this is earth, this is earthy stuff. I don't wanna be perfect, but I do wanna create a texture and you will definitely see why when I start applying things. So we've got your glass, and then we've got uh, the adhesive with the stencil, and then the mud, and then the texture. Now, you are going to be very tempted to just go ahead and pull the stencil right off, but that's the wrong thing to do. Wrong, wrong, bad, baby, bad. Do not pull it off. We have to dry this mud first. So how would we dry it? We're gonna dry it with a blow dryer. And I'm going to say this, there's two rules here. Everybody write this down if you're writing things down. If not, just clear your mind for a moment and listen, heed what I say, my friends, okay? Do not let this mud dry for more than an hour onto your stencil. And especially don't leave it overnight. You will not be able to get the stencil off. So we need to dry it. Do not use a heat gun to dry it. You will crack your glass. What I am going to use is a blow dryer. And this is very important. I'm going to blow dry the top and then I'm going to dr blow dry underneath the glass, okay? Underneath the glass. What's gonna happen is you're going to get frustrated. When I taught Dana this technique, she was getting frustrated because she kept pulling the stencil and the top part is dry, but the mud underneath was not. So it was smearing and pulling up. This needs to be pretty darn dry. So we're gonna go do that right now. I have a regular blow dryer here. You guys probably get these at the thrift store for five bucks, if that, if you don't want to bring your home blow dryer. But I'm going to blow dry this whole thing for a few minutes. You're going to feel it to the touch. I mean, it's it's starting to dry, but I can see where it's wet. But the big thing is I'm going to flip it over. So let's dry this. You see the texture coming out even more once you're drying it. And we want that texture because that is realistic. That's, if you look at a terracotta pot, there's graininess in there. I mean, there's some that are really smooth, but I just like texturizing it. Also, they'll have some raised spots that if, when we paint, it'll look very shabby chic. You can get really shabby chic with this technique, and that is really, really in style for anybody's home. Shabby chic! I think it's amazing that people pay money for Chevy for when stuff's weathering away, but I sure do. I can tell you that. My whole house is, uh, what's the word? Weathered, Chevy chic. Uh, 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 I can't think of what it is. You guys know what I'm saying, though. Okay. So now it's, it's feeling pretty good, but I'm going to turn it over. Ah, I'm a little wet still. I can feel it. I'm rushing it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dry this side, and then we're going to go back and do the back. So the mud underneath. Put your hand right in the middle of the disc, glass, whatever you're using. You can feel with the blow dryer. My hand is heating up right now. I know it's working. Don't forget your edges. The edges are very important. That's where you're going to be pulling the stencil from first, okay? Do not use a heat gun, everybody. Do not use a heat gun. And this is also another reason why you don't want to go too thick with that mud. I mean, we just want it to be a primer. It's a primer. By doing the texture, if it's nice and thin, I can still see the glass just barely through there. That's fine. This is, um, it's not shabby chic. I can't think of the word I'm looking for. It'll come to me. Now, Weathered. I don't want you to rip the stencil off. Weathered. Weathered. I don't want you to rip the stencil off, but what I do want you to do is test it. So I'm gonna pull and look. Okay, so right there, Dana, can you get that? 
you can see where it's still wet. It's coming up with the stencil. I just want you to test it. Put it back down and give it another blow dry. So this, you might have to do this a couple times. Really, guys, it's not a long process. I'm sure you can probably pop this in your kiln at 225 and hold it for 10 minutes and get the same results with drying. Um, but we're going to go ahead and finish drying this up. It's going to take about another minute, and then I'll see you back at the table. Okay, so I'm pretty well dry. Now, I want you just to test and see if Dana can kind of zoom in to see. Looks pretty good right there. I got a little bit of wetness right there, so I'm just going to let it be. This is going to be the most frustrating part of the technique for you. What's fantastic about this is it doesn't have to be perfect. Let some of it pull up if it does. And I'll be quite honest with you, I didn't clean my stencil as I should have before the video. So always pop it back, pop the stencil and because I've got, I had some old debris on there. But anywho, um, this will work just fine. Do not pull the stencil off after you dry the mud. Repeat, do not pull the stencil off after you dry the mud because you still have to paint. How are you going to paint all these little areas in here without that stencil? It's going to take you forever. I'm all about speed, okay, and getting it done. All right, so we are going to use glass line paints. Now, what color palette do I use before I even get into the glass line paints? I find this to be the most challenging um, thing for my students when they come here. I see the immediate stress on their face uh, when I give them a project or we're working on something for five days, what color do I choose? It's the most popular question I get right away. About a year ago, maybe a little, maybe two years, I don't know, a while ago, I made these books for my classes and everybody says, oh my gosh, Tony, will you make these? Will you make these? Can I buy one? Can I buy one? Can I buy one? I said, no, they're not for sale. I just made them for a class as well. I told everybody it would be two weeks and <laughs> eight months later. Are you ready for this? Dun, 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 bam! Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I love it. Available today now is color palettes for the Bullseye Glass Artist by Tanya Viet of AA Glass. These are awesome references for studios. Anybody who owns a studio that's watching this right now, contact us. We can give you a, um, a bulk price. But So what it is, these are pictures. These are professional pictures that a photographer has taken that we had pur purchased the, a photo and the licensing for. And then what I did was create a color palette with them. And then next to the color palette is the color that you would use in the bullseye glass. I love this book, okay? For example, this one right here, this will be great for strip work. I don't know what kind of strip plate that I want to make, what colors, boom, there you go. I love it, guys. I love it, love it, love it. So anyways, this is now available to the world and this is for bullseye glass users. System 96 people, please do not fret. You know it, baby. Yours is being printed right now. So I'm doing one in System 96. I've done one in System 96 already. In the center of the book though, there's a color lesson here. There's the color wheel and what color description of color, terms of color mean, how to use a color wheel. So that's kind of cool. I'm really excited about it, guys. It was a big accomplishment. And look at that. Florida awaits you. Come and see us. Okay, so anyways, that's cool. And this is going to be a really good reference for you guys for anything you do in glass art or paint or anything or any kind of artistry. So, okay, now we're going to do our colors. You can use a brush. I've got some colors right here, glass line. I have deep red, I have terracotta, I have copper, I have yellow. Now, we're not going for the vibrancy of, of these colors that these paints can make, okay? There's, there's, um, we're going for a toned down look, a toned down look because we want it to be very earthy. Just pulling this over. See that, the, the dullness, that's, that's what we want actually. Now, you can use a brush and you can be perfect about it if you want, but why would you? It's terracotta. You can brush and brush and brush. Now what's awesome is that the mud is now your primer, so it will let you brush and get all the color on there. That's fantastic, but I really don't want that because I want actually just to hit some of the raised areas. So don't worry about the brush. I, I tend to kind of either, you know, uh, can you see that, Dana? Yes. Do you know how, to, do you know how that goes, Dana? Uh, okay. <laughs> or I'll just take a foam brush and just kind of do that, okay? Whatever it is. And I'm always mixing. I'm constantly mixing my colors. Like there, I, I use deep red, um, you know, copper. See the brush, sometimes, it depends what kind of coverage you want. What do you want? What do you want, guys, okay? A little yellow. Um, so here's what I wanna tell you though. You know, deep red's a great color. Red orange, I find in glass line paints, fires the most actual true red, okay? So if you're going to use the red orange, 
just a tip for you guys, you would fire this piece and you would go 1500 for about 12 minutes and the red will really, really, really come out. Um, but the trick to the glass line paints is um, interval holds throughout. I started doing this 10 years ago and I will give you guys a schedule for that. Um, these are clay based paints and I started researching and said, well, that's how it comes out in ceramics. So I started doing it and my colors are fantastic with the glass line paints. So I like red orange, so we'll use Dana. Gosh darn it, I wish they would make bottles that were smaller so you'd have to pay like 10 bucks for a bottle and then it dries on you after like, oh man. Dana, what are we gonna do about that? Well. Oh my gosh, <laughs> show them, Dane. Show them this. Look at this, it's, 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 it's. Okay, this is, sorry, that was annoying. This is, we're the only ones to have it. I called up Glass Line and I said, can you make me a kit of my favorite colors and can you make it in smaller bottles so my kittens can have all the colors that I, that I love so much. These are my favorites with Glass Line, how they fire, we've had a lot of experimentation. And can you put them in little bottles so they have samples? And then can you put my name on it? Bam! It's another, I'm gonna roll this month, guys. We got the color book and the kits. So Tanya's mini kit, they're convenient little, little bottles, little babies, okay, little babies. See that? I can't stand when people talk in baby voices. I totally just did that. I totally just, I'm sorry, guys. I want you to erase that part from your, from, uh, just don't listen to it. That was terrible. I can't stand people to do that. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Okay, so you see how cute they are? They're little, they're about half the size. You can get a comparison right there. And obviously that means much cheaper in the price. So these Tanya mini kits have all of the colors that I love and also you can mix the colors. And don't worry if you don't use them in time, it's okay because they're little. And then you can just buy more when you need it. So thank you Glass Lime Paints for doing that for us. We love it, love it, love it. I'm super excited about that. I thought that was just the cutest thing. I actually ran into Dana today and said, Dana, look at these little cute things. That was almost baby voice. I'm just playing right now is what I'm doing. So all I'm doing is playing. I'm going to blot the paint, do it where I want, and then what we're gonna do is guess what? We're gonna dry this too. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting this and then we're gonna give it a dry with a blow dryer top and bottom just like you did and then we're going to pull the stencil and I'm going to show you what to do between the lines. Okay so we are all dry now so we have the glass line paints on top of the mud which was our primer and I'm going to show you exactly why we just did that okay so now I'm going to pull my stencil slowly I will tell you guys this the better you cleaned your stencil from the time before the better this is going to be so uh, if you're like my lovely confidant Dana who um, is very clean as she goes and not me like running through everything really fast and um, she gets perfect results but oh that was pretty darn good okay so immediately this goes into the bucket immediately and I'm going to tell you guys something the worst part of this technique of course is cleaning your stencils but here is a trick what you want to do is let your stencil soak overnight that's what we do we put all of them in the same bucket and then the next morning Put it flat on your sink on the bottom and then just take a scrub brush, one of those ones with the little, you know, the round head and just scrub like this. So the mud will be, you know, kind of wet mudish, and then it just comes, it comes right off and it's fine. So, you know, I don't clean my stencils right now because what fun would that be? I got to get to the good stuff. So, but I soak them overnight and then the next day these, these, the stencils are tough as nails and they can take it. So pretty easy. And if you have tips on how to clean them a little bit better, um, go ahead and just pass them along in the Facebook group. Okay. You see these open areas that I have here? This is actually where the adhesive was and we're gonna end up spraying that. But it looks a little too shiny, doesn't look very authentic. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to get a brush that will go in between these lines, okay? And that one looks perfect, okay? This is um, a square brush, but you can, I, I actually like the round brushes as well. Just do what feels comfortable. The idea is this. I'm gonna come in between the lines with the glass line, okay? But remember how glass line doesn't stick so well to the glass? See how that is? That's exactly, first of all, why I had the primer. When you brush it on, you gotta get it on thick, you gotta wait for it to dry, do another coat, wait for the dry, do another coat if you're using a brush. Everyone probably knows that about it. But I'm gonna rely on that and I'm gonna give it kind of a washed out look between the middle. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the color palette that you chose. I had uh, red orange, terracotta, copper, and a, and a dash of yellow, okay? I want you to choose 
the darkest color in there, one of the darker colors in there. So I'm going to choose um, the terracotta, okay? And so what I want you to do is add black to the terracotta. This could be deep red, I'm not sure, but you get my whole point. And I want you to add black. What black does to the paint is it adds a shade to the paint. Black adds a shade, white adds, white adds a tint, and gray adds a tone. If you'd like to know more about this, you can go right in the center right here where it explains all of that. Now back to our program. So what you're gonna do is mix this. So now I have a shade of the darkest color, okay? Mix, mix, mix. You're gonna go, Tanya, how much? I don't know how much. Well, that's a little black. Use your, use your judgment. Use your, what you wanna do. But it's, I definitely want the black in there for the shade, okay? So a shade, oh, mix black with the darkest, one of the darkest colors that you have in your palette, and there's my shade. Don't get too much on the brush. A little bit, of, just a little is all you need. And all I'm going to do is paint in between the lines. It's pretty fast. Now, when doing this, I'm washing out the color with this darker shade, which is gonna be cool, because um, we we're trying to go for a pottery look. But also, I'm outlining, and look what's happening. It's actually edging all of this stuff that I did and making it really stand out because it's a darker shade. So the black really makes it the tone good. Okay, so I'm gonna go right through. I just realized I didn't fin finish my sentence. The black, um, the shade of the colors is really gives it that really cool authentic look. So I'm gonna come through just a little bit on the brush. I'm just gonna kind of do this side so my arm doesn't have to cross the front of the camera. But see how I'm letting it touch the edges of the pottery design? Look at guys. It's got a really um, brush look. It's, it's streaky. It's awesome. It's the way it should be. It shouldn't be perfect. And if you pull this up and look, I got a mess right there because I was testing it before I should have off camera. I don't care. This is shabby chic. Well, I mean, this is what it's people will be like, oh my gosh, how'd you do that? And you'll be like, I uh, had to sketch that design out the night before. <laughs> Just let it be what it wants to be. Okay. So let's say, so you're going to go through all these lines. This is, this doesn't take a long time. Do not think this takes a long time. Look how fast it is. I'm not even being awesome about it. Watch this. Ready? You know, let it just kind of let it, let it be, let it, let it get on stuff. Let's all right, come around right here. So we're toning down the glass underneath. We're adding a darker shade of our palette to it, which gives it a very cool, authentic pottery look. This is exactly what I did with the one that was fired. I'm letting the paint touch the edges of the design that I have put on there. You guys gonna remember all these steps? I hope so. You're gonna have to watch this video over and over again and hear that horrid baby talk voice that I did. I'm mortified that I did that on camera and I'm, I don't reshoot. I go one take unless something real major happens because I don't think it's natural after that. Okay, Dane, look at this right here. See where I got this dark? That looks cool, right, Dana? That looks good. That, that's what we wanna be like that. Look at, look at, I'm brushing across. I don't care. I'm making it look very artsy. Okay, so on and so forth. Also, if you feel like it, take some of your shade, give yourself some accents. You want to? I would use a smaller brush, guys. I would use a smaller brush. I'm just, not, I'm just being lazy right now. Uh, you know, give yourself some of that. Use that shade and bring it in there. How's that look, Dana, on camera? It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Looks good. Okay, so it's the darker color palette. Take your darker, one of your darker colors in the color palette. Mix it with a black. Mix it with a black. That'll cause a shade. And now we're causing the shading in between. When glass line paint dries, it dries very dull and chalky looking. Don't keep putting it on top thinking that that's a mistake. It's not a mistake. So uh, let's see, you can see it kind of right here. Dana, are they able to see that on camera? I asked Dana, of course, everybody, just because I can't tell. Um, yes. You can see it's chalky and the color is muted and going away, but it will come back when we fire it. Okay, now if I fire this right side up, Okay, you could. If I put it in the kiln flat on its back and I did it right side up, that would be fine. And the glass is going to gloss up. And that's okay, um, but that's not the look that we're going for. Remember that feel I was telling you about with the pottery? You know, you can feel it? Well, it's rough and I want it to be rough, okay? I, I really want it to be rough. And the glass line paints are also lead-free, non-toxic as well. Um, I'm not sure I would serve food in it. I, I don't know if I would. I'd make it more of a decorative piece, but you could. Um, but anyways, what I'm gonna do is take this, once I'm through painting, I don't think I need to do the whole thing. You're painting between the lines. You're taking your base piece, so this is Tecta right here, and this is that special production that I found in my studio. And I take this entire thing, and ready? Write this down. For the glottery technique, you're going to full fuse upside down. There's two reasons for this. Number one, 
So I get the mud and the paints to be a chalky feel and a chalky look. Um, and the number two, well, actually that is the reason and it's two reasons in one. I want the paint to be chalky. I don't want it to be vibrant. So I fire it down so the heat can't get right to the top and gloss in it up. I want my glass to be a little textured. I fired it face down. Fire it down on thin fire, guys. If you want to go for the fiber paper, you can, but the thin fire is just fine. It leaves just, uh, I like this, okay? So I'm going to fire this face down and we're going to do one more thing I want to show you and then our time has ended. So this is my piece after it fires. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. Lots of awesome sauce. Okay, first of all, Dana, can you get this area right here? Okay, I see the white mud. Good, I want to, I want to see the white mud. I see the texture from the mat, fantastic. I see the colors that are kind of sponged on. I see my accents and look at this in the middle. It's the shade of, oh, I love it. Gosh, I love it, okay. Here's something you can do, guys. This is a tricky, tricky, tricky thing. If you have not seen the other video, aaeglass.com came out with a new product called Glass Glow. It's a metallic coating uh, available in 12 colors. I mean, and it comes red, purple. I mean, and it fires true to co color. Copper, gold, antique, vermeil. And what you do is mix it with a water or some kind of medium. I like the UGC medium. And what you do is it comes in this little container. You put a little water or you just see whatever you want and you mix it up. It's almost like liquid iridized coating. Now, this, this glass glow can fi be fired between 1300 and 1500. When it's on top of the mud, it doesn't like to stick. So you have to go to at least 1325, 1350. Uh, the higher you go, the better it goes. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna give you guys a super duper tricky schedule, okay? And we're gonna apply this to the bowl. And of course this is optional and slump at the same time. Otherwise, you're gonna slump the bowl, put it back into the mold, and then do a, do a glass glow schedule, which I don't wanna do that. So you're gonna lose some of this, but you're gonna have the highlights, and that is what we're seeing right here. Is that coming up on camera? Mm-hmm. All that gold. I just want it to be a little, I don't wanna kill this thing with gold and, and copper and all this good stuff, but I'm gonna use a cotton ball and just come around the edge like this. This is totally optional, but I just kinda of wanna show it all to you. You got to get a good amount on there, guys, because you're going to lose a lot when you wash it away, okay? And I'm going to put this bowl in. You're going to see a lot more on it now, and then when you, when you fire it, it's not going to be this much. I want to prepare you for that. Reason why is because it's on top of the mud and because we're only going to 1310. So we're going to slump this bowl, and then I'm going to have you go up another segment quickly to fire the, the glass glow on. It's, it's a tricky thing. We had to do it quite a few times. So I'm just gonna kind of come through, use a little cotton ball. I like the cotton ball because I can get a lot on there, make it kind of cheeky, whatever. Don't don't murder this thing with um, this stuff. It doesn't need to be done. It really it really doesn't. And just kind of you know blot it and stuff, blot it and stuff. That was a good explanation. Blot it and stuff. Um, and that's it. Blah blah blah. I, I really took so much time putting texture and paint and made it so beautiful that I, I don't want to. So. If you don't get enough on here, it's gonna wash away. If your kiln didn't fire hot enough, it's gonna wash away. It is a tricky schedule, guys. So just make a little sample and try it and see what your kiln does. Of course, I will provide a schedule to you. Oh, that was a lot to say. So that's it. I am now going to slump this into my favorite bowl slumper, which can be anything that you have. And I'm going to fire the glass glow on the same time. I love this project. I'm thrilled how it came out. And we're. I'm, I just, love that you guys love what i'm doing and if you like the other videos please go and watch the other videos at aaeglass.com don't forget your color book guys i'm so excited and don't forget your tanya mini paint kit anything else that i have to say to my fine sweet 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 kittens i think that's it guys i'm, I'm out of here and thanks again for watching